The following is a presentation of Project Independence and WCWP. Project Independence is the Aging in Place initiative of the town of North Hempstead. Welcome to Project Independence and You. Good morning and welcome to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm your host today, Rebecca Miller, along with Christina Liu. She'll be co-hosting and she's also our radio show producer. How are you today, Christina? Good. How are you, Beck? I feel like it's been a while. You know, I feel like we haven't been able to do this in a while. So it's good to I know. be here. I know. It does, it does seem like a while, yeah. but yet here we are. Here and we are. I know Otto couldn't be here today. Um, so we hoping to uh, get him back next week, but yep. um, I know that he's on a vacation. So Christina, of course, pulls the show together every week um, with wonderful guests. And today is no different. Um, I want to introduce our guest today, Dr. Jamie Nieto. And Dr. Nieto is a, a chief of um, neurosurgical spine development, the Department of Neurosurgery at North Shore University Hospital, Northwell. So we want to thank you so much. I know it's a, it's a lot to give us a full hour, but we really appreciate it. My pleasure. Hi, everyone. So um, again, thank you so much. And that's quite a long title. So. <laughs> If, if you don't mind just explaining a little bit about what um, neuro, neurosurgical neurology is, because I know you're gonna talk to us a lot today about the back, the spine, um, and kind of what we can do as we get older to uh, maybe have better posture or how we can heal from back issues. But how does, how does neurology kind of relate to back issues? So think of neurology as the non-surgical treatments of any disease pertaining to the central and peripheral nervous system, the brain and, the, and all of the nerves in the arms and legs. So neurologists are sort of usually the, the first stop after your medical doctor diagnoses you with something, either a herniated disc or leg pain or memory problems or seizures, uh, headaches, common complaints, a headache, back pain, leg pain, all of those things, the medical doctor, a lot of the time sends to the neurologist, the neurologist does the first interventions. And, and of course they tried all, all non-invasive procedures. Uh, in addition to that, neurologists treat uh, common and chronic conditions like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, memory problems, movement disorders, um, and so the, the treatment that, the, that they render is usually non-surgical. Neurosurgeons uh, come in to play when those problems could be addressed by surgery. So brain tumors, the majority or a lot of them have to have surgery to be removed. So that's when we come in. The neurologist still remains an intricate, an intricate part of the team. And, and so we work as a team. When I have a complicated patient in the office that may have leg pain, but all of leg pain is not related to one condition. Sometimes the leg pain is really related to some aspect of medicine that doesn't need an operation. There are degenerative diseases, there's inflammatory diseases, there's infectious diseases, all of which an operation doesn't necessarily be the first one. So that's, that's how we defer how are we different? Uh, but we're still a team. We, we, I know a lot of neurology, but I'm not a neurologist. The neurologists know a lot of neurosurgeons, but they don't do surgery. So we, we, we work always as a team. Oh, right. You're like, a, you're like the puzzle solver where, where, where it goes. And the so one is the siren and the other one is the, is, is the fireman. <laughs> I like that. I like that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so of course, most of our listeners are um, people, older people, town of North Hempstead, 60s and older, and probably even more older than that because people in their 60s today are working. And, you know, um, as we get older, we just, things just happen naturally. And I don't know if there's ever a way to truly avoid certain things that happen as the body ages, but are there things that we can do aid either slow it down or be a little bit more aware? You know, one of the things that I, I you know, I've heard over the years too is some people have like um, bulging discs 
in their in their back but if it doesn't impinge on a nerve they may never know because they're not feeling it so i don't know how accurate those things are so what is it that um as we age what are some of the things that we should be looking out for or doing so very very important very interesting question um so a lot of people would have uh gray hairs in their 20s um and a lot of people get gray hairs in their 90s and wrinkles some people wrinkle early people wrinkle later but of those people that wrinkle early, if you get too much sun exposure, you probably will get more wrinkles. Right. And so it's one of those things. There are things that we could do in terms of the bulging disc. Discs in general are just like any other part of the body. They will degenerate. They will wear down um, as the hair does, as the skin does, as every other part of your body muscle. So bulging discs in general are not a problem. And as you said it, if it is not causing any problems, nothing to do about it. Bulging discs start really maybe in the in the late twenties, early thirties, and if by forty we get an MRI on a hundred people, a significant number of them will have a finding that say, "Oh, you need an operation," but you don't really have any symptoms. So it's not necessarily that you operate on an MRI; you have to operate on the patient who's got the symptoms. Sometimes you have a herniated disc, very small in a critical area, and that doesn't get better. You have to operate. And it was a small disc, but if you have a, a, a bulging disc in an area where there's a lot of space, nothing to do about it. The nerves get irritated when they get compressed. So bulging discs in general are not a bad thing, are naturally occurring changes in our body as you would call the gray hairs and the wrinkles right what to do about it what to do about it because uh, you brought up an interesting point we're all gonna die right it's, it's a simple statement so you don't have to push it so uh right. you gotta treat your body like a temple keep it nice keep it clean keep it you know tidy up and all that so things that become problematic for me when I have people with pain as they get older, the two most common ones are osteoporosis and obesity. Uh -huh. So if you want to keep your temple nice and shiny, protect your bones. Women are at a higher risk of getting osteoporosis than men are because of hormonal changes. And so it's important to check with your doctor. It's important to keep a healthy lifestyle. It's important not to do things that would promote bad things to happen in your body. Excessive sun will cause skin cancer, potentially. Most common, can common can uh, kind of cancer. Cigarette smoking is the number one cause of lung cancer, completely preventable. If we don't smoke, most people that have lung cancer probably will be safe from that. So for the spine, what do you have to do? You have to keep a healthy lifestyle, and that includes exercise. Uh, one of the more interesting sort of uh, uh, inventions or gadgets in the last 10 years have been the wearables, the, 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 the step counters and the activity counters and all these things. Mm -hmm. Once you start looking at the numbers, Assuming you don't put it on the dog and let the dog run okay. <laughs> but if you really count your steps, most of us don't do enough exercise to spend the energy that we should be spending to maintain a healthy life lifestyle. So osteoporosis, you gotta keep your if, if you, you know, some some women go into menopause earlier than others, I would put them at a, at a, at a high risk. Thin women have a little bit higher risk of getting osteoporosis. That doesn't mean that they have to be obese. What it means is that they have to keep checking, checking, keep checking their, their bone scans and talk to your medical doctor. The medical doctor is your, your best resource. What do I do about A? What do I do about B? Uh, supplement uh, taking has become like an epidemic. Doesn't mean that you have to take every supplement in the world to be healthy, okay? you know, have a consultation with your doctor. There's a lot of unnecessary things that we take every day, but there's a lot of necessary things we do not take. 
And those are the ones that we have to uh, be conscious of. Exercise is an overall good medicine in, in moderation to everything, your heart health, your muscle health, and your bone health. Um, most difficult thing is to be 90. Your brain is absolutely sharp and your body doesn't take you anywhere. Um, because your joints are gone, your bones are too brittle, you can't breathe very well, things like that. So it is, it is very important. Uh, and weight, your, your weight. Weight is, is difficult because we still, you know, the AMA now came with new uh, standards. What What is obesity? Well, now we're revisiting the whole issue. But again, talk to your doctor, see how you feel. You have to keep a healthy weight. Um, and it is very difficult in a society that one everything done three days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be yesterday, now we want it three days ago. Uh, and, and weight control is very important um, because it wears down your, your hips, your knees, your ankles, your spine. Uh, most people that are uh, overweight uh, would be able to handle it for a long time. The body is a very, it's a perfect machine but all perfect machines will eventually break down. And, and it is important to keep those things uh, in, in, close, in close proximity. Your doctor's visits, preventive care, bone health, and, 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 a, and a healthy weight in addition to a healthy exercise routine. Yeah, it's very important for so many reasons, even emotionally to be fit and the way you feel it's it's motivating um it's it's definitely motivating i'm interested like i i'm going to jump around a little bit i hope you don't mind because these are just things that are coming to mind and um i right now i'm holding up my phone for those listening what have i mean people have, have, Beck, i was thinking about the same thing this morning i was talking to dan about it before the show because I even find my, and my husband always yells at me, you know, because you're sitting there and you're just constantly looking down, you know, at this phone. How, what are you, are you, what are you seeing in the field of people, you know, because of the fact that, I mean, now that a lot of teenagers and even young 20s have grown up with a cell phone. So as they're kind of maturing and their bones are growing and they're, hunched over for, you know, the laptop or the phone or the gaming and things like that. I'm curious if you're seeing a, a, a different trend in the way that, you know, you're seeing patients because of that and, and injuries that happen. Well, I think it's a little bit early. This has happened maybe in the last 15 years or so. Right. Uh, the spinal deformity, the change in your body, uh, appearance when it is related to posture, it tends to represent later in life. So my my prediction is that in 40 years, we're going to have a lot of people that are not very thin because we're spending too much time on the screen. Uh, and we're going to have people looking at the floor all the time because now they cannot look up because their neck just became like that. There is an actual disease in the spine uh, called apprentices back. And it's when people have to look in a, you know, bend down all the time to learn new things. And, and that is an actual disease. It's very uncommon because most people, once they learn, then they go out and ex exercise their, their, um, their profession. Uh, there's other naturally occurring things where your spine curves and, and they're very debilitating. And so the way to prevent those two things is by doing exercise, maintaining a healthy, posture. The body is intended to be upright and not be hunched over all the time. Uh, people get carpal tunnel because they use the hands too much. They have to take breaks. That's the importance about taking breaks. It's not really because of the union mandated issue it's because your body needs some, some, you know, rest from all these repetitive activities and hunching over to look at your, at your phone and, and the computer and all that eventually is going to be detrimental for your posture, and most people are spending less time doing exercise. And that is what is going to be a bigger of a problem because it's really hard to be on a treadmill and be texting. It's really hard to <laughs> And I dangerous. Talent. 
really hard to be, you know, lifting 20 or 30 pounds and be, you know, be answering your email. So, so the exit, the breaks at work and all those things should be uh, used to relax, change your posture, walk around, um, do a little bit of uh, stretching and moving around. It'll be healthier for your, for your joints. Right. Well, unfortunately, I think that um, what's happening with technology and the younger generation, because they are also growing at the same time, right. it's going to be very good for your business unless there's a, you know, a huge awareness and shift in the way that you know, we utilize our technology or at least the amount of time everybody spends on it. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, it's funny to say oh, you're, if you're not, I mean, you're on the treadmill. I see so many people on the treadmill you know on their phone and yeah. it's just crazy like they're gonna you can get hurt it's cr you know it's just crazy i mean i i actually i'm a yoga teacher and i i have classes where people come in and it's they're on their cell phone in a yoga class and yeah. it it's they just i don't know it's crazy it's uh because well, it's like an addiction now you know it, it's, oh. it's 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 just like becomes part of your you know every movement yeah, and it, and it well, it's, it's not a bad, it's not a bad addiction. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not, bad, but we have to learn how to be do it in moderation. Everything. I mean, right. you know, um, for some things, you know, one one wine a day, it's okay, but you don't have to drink the whole bottle, and and do it while you don't drive and all these things. So it's very important for young people. And if we go back to the uh, the past president mandates for for exercise. We should do about a 30 minutes of exercise every day. And and the fact that you walk around at your job all the time, that's not exercise, that's work. So uh people, and it's not a lot of time. If we could cut that one half an hour from the screen time and dedicate it to light exercise, yeah, you know, fairly routine yoga stretching, it's not necessarily that we're gonna put our nail behind our head and do a pretzel. No, is is really go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Stretch a yeah. little bit, relax a little bit, move your body in a way that it, it has some mobility because we all, you know, I'm getting old and I'm getting a stiff. If I don't move, I, I get more stiff. It is, yeah. It's simple. The, the car is, is just getting old. It's such common sense, Dr. Nieto, but we actually have to take a quick break. Um, we'll be right back with Project Independence and You on Community Talk Radio 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back. Take WCWP with you wherever you go with the WCWP app. Listen live 24-7 to all of our streams, all from one app. Plus, call the studios directly from the app and visit our social media. Download the app through the iOS App Store on Apple devices or the Google Play Store on Android by searching WCWP Radio or visit WCWP.org for links. The WCWP app, available now on iOS and Android devices. And welcome back to Project Independence and You, Community Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. I'm Rebecca Miller, along with Christina Liu and Dan Cox. And we're speaking to a wonderful guest, Dr. Nieto, and talking about um, just changes. And, 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 and we always like helpful hints, Dr. Nieto, because we don't want a senior to think, you know, it's it's you can't do anything. We we like we like to kind of encourage people into positive aging. And even if we have a lot of things going on in our body, there are things that we can do to improve it or prevent other things from happening. Um, and and it's never too late to exercise. I mean, no matter how old you are, uh, Project Independence has um, on North Hempstead Television fitness classes for seniors, and we always offer start in a chair, you know, make sure the chair is safe. And whatever they're doing in the class, you know, you just you just keep moving and breathing and and that kind of a thing. And you're never really you're never too old to do even if it's just upper body, upper body stuff. That is correct. Um, if you think about when when a patient has surgery, they, they essentially become um, immobile for a while. And how do they have to start uh, in a chair? They sit, then they stand. Then a lot of the times they use a walker. I think a walker is one of the best, uh, less 
least use exercise machines. Um, the walker is, is helpful. Once you can stand up, you could do your leg raises because you're supported. Both hands, you're stable. You're not at risk of falling. Okay. You could do uh, leg lifts. You could do feet, you know, stand on your feet, the tiptoes. You could mm -hmm. move joints. You could do all these things. You could do circles with your hips as, as you support yourself. Um, it, is, it is very useful. I tell the patient, you don't need anybody to help you. Once you can stand up and support yourself with, with the brace, with the, with the, with the walker, I'm sorry. Um, start moving your legs, even in the same position. Do 10 leg races. Each leg is better than sitting down for five minutes because now you moved a little bit. When you're in a chair, you're absolutely right. You know, the bottles of water, the two pound weights, uh, I don't know, the half pound of, of uh, beans. I don't know, whatever you have at home, the, the canned vegetables, all those, those could be a sitting exercise uh uh equipment routine move move your joints uh it, it's very important once once you do that um flexibility you you teach jo yoga and if you want to become flexible again it's, it's really hard but it doesn't mean that you can't bend down you could do it with some help you use the help of a chair you don't have to as I said, put your 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 hand all the way down to the floor, a little bit at the time. You don't you don't have to break yourself to stretch. You just have to stretch, and and these are very important things. You, I I, I do a, a brief fifteen minute exercise routine every day because I don't have a lot of time. I I do that every day. I have a treadmill in my house. I have a bicycle. I use it very rarely. I do it a simple low uh, intensity yoga stretching. And, mm -hmm. and it's just, I spend the whole day standing, looking down on my operative field. I will go home and I stretch. And I stretch really laying down a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. um, I don't stretch standing up. I lay down and, and, I, and I stretch my joints. Because I've spent the whole day standing up. So, uh, have you know, I go on a, on a yoga mat. And some people, as they become a little bit more hypotic, as we call it. They go much hunch over. They have a hard time laying down. So they would mm -hmm. have to modify that yoga mat, maybe with a little incline, and slowly try to try to move your joints. So um, not necessarily to leave 20, 30, 40, 50. Anything that you have at home, a chair is a good exercise yeah. uh, tool. A walker is a good exercise tool. If you have three stairs at home that you could climb repetitively with a rail, it's a very safe exercise. Uh, you don't have to go up 20 floors, three steps, repeat it 10 minutes. We have to look for ways to um, use what we have around to get better. The gym is there. We all pay our fees. We never go and work it. <laughs> Sometimes we buy, we buy we buy our exercise bike and we could hang our clothes in there. We get a nice treadmill and then we start piling boxes on it. So <laughs> a lot of the times you don't need any of that. And, and and of course walking walking is the cheapest exercise. It's very hard to say that you go, especially for people that live in areas where have nice walking trails, that you come back upset after a walk. No, most people come rejuvenated. 10 minutes of sun, 50, we need about 15 minutes of sun every day to have a good calcium metabolism, okay? We don't have to burn. We have to just get a little bit of sunlight. All those things, being outside for 15 minutes, walking a little bit, again, doesn't cost us anything. It's better than looking at our Facebook profile, on the cell phone, sitting down, doing nothing. Mm -hmm. No, and I think, well, as you know, and as Rebecca had said earlier, you know, we love on the show the positive aspect of things. You know, I think a lot of people get frustrated because in a perfect world, you know, we all would have took perfect care of our bodies and did all these things and didn't, you know. But, you know, as you're young, you're certainly not thinking about, you know, what your spine's going to look like, you know, when you're 80 years old. You know, so I think that these things are great and I, I, perfect for the listeners to hear. 
because I know my own self, you know, just the idea of saying, all right, just go 15 minutes, get some sunlight, do some walking, you know, it's an attainable goal. You don't feel as overwhelmed. And I, and I would love for our listeners to really get that across. And I, your tip about the walker is such a great thing because, you know, a lot of our seniors certainly do have that. And this is a safe and easy way to, to certainly do that. So these are, um, really all super helpful. I mean, you should see my paper over here. I'm writing down all kinds of things. And it's such a positive way to look at a walker right. as mm -hmm. a piece of exercise right. equipment. Right. You know, Absolutely. I don't know why someone hasn't like developed, you know, certain things to do if you have to stand for a while, like, you know, a, a, attach a squishy bowl so you could squeeze mm -hmm. your hand or, you know, certain things to mm -hmm. adapt it so that you can exercise. I think that's such Absolutely. a wonderful, positive way of looking at your walker, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, a yeah. it's really an ex a piece of exercise equipment. Yeah, you know, a stable really... piece of exercise equipment, you know, which is I like just, that. Absolutely. Because I, you know, I, I was thinking about that because even my own parents, you know, they've had over the years, you know, they're still like relatively active, but they've had, you know, injuries and stuff. So we've had, you know, walkers because of one different surgeries, you know, and then it's like a minute they're done. It's like, it's like, please put that away. I don't even want to look at it. But I'm like thinking, I'm like, this is actually something that could be, you know, reused. We'll have to dust it out of the garage. Um, but it's a, a really great, 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 great idea. Yeah. Another great tool is actually uh, dogs, pets. The dog is actually a really good exercise tool. Uh, people that, that walk their dogs live a better life. And so for those people that have pets, if they could walk your, your own dog a few minutes a day, that'll be good for everybody. Your, your your relationship with your pet and, and your relationship with exercise. So those are things that not only they give you tons of love and companion companionship, but they also, you know, help you keep moving. Mm -hmm. So anything that you could do, and, and as, as we were talking about the walker, a, a, a chair without wheels and a walker, you could do a hundred um, Time repetition of standing up, just stand up and sit. Stand up and sit, very safe. And, and engage your core. Exactly. Core is so important. Right, the sitting position. Just raise your knees. You know, fifty times or ten times or five times, raising your off the ground while you're sitting down in a in a supported back chair or chair with with back chair. Then it, it really helps your your core. All those things. Uh, laying down, doing leg raises. So a lot of the stuff that we really want to do exercise is really useless. Most most of us have a, a you know some something you could throw on the floor that is a little padded, it could be a blanket or or a yeah. comforter, whatever that is. We have a chair, and a lot of us have one or two steps at home that uh, we could we could use. And 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 it's very important. It's never too late to start. Yeah. You know. It, 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 you you read all the time these marvelous stories about someone who started running marathons in the 70s mm. and they were never runners and then in at 90 they're still running marathons and you go oh man i wish i could do that what it takes it's a little bit of effort get out of there go meet the world the world will never come to meet you all right i i feel like sometimes people um we all have limits. As we get older, I, I can't do the things I used to do, but, you know, I accept it and I'm happy to be able to do what I can do that continues to help. You know, I can't look at the person next to me on, you know, on the treadmill or the elliptical and they're 20 years younger, you know, and I'm feeling self-conscious because I used to do that, but I can't really do that anymore. But I'm still getting a great workout. It's really your you when you work out, it's it's you. It's the relationship you're doing. You're not looking to um, you know, it's not going to the Olympics. You just want to feel better. You want to figure it all out for yourself. So I feel like people don't feel like limits are a bad thing, you know, mm -hmm. but we have a lot a lot of you know, like to, to say, well, you know, I have, I have to accept the fact that, you know, I do have limits to what I'm going to do because I don't want to get hurt. I mean, we have speed, you know, speeding limits. We have all kinds of limits in life to kind of keep us safe. So it's not a, a bad thing. 
Um, and, you know, I think it's kind of hard to accept that as yeah. we get Because older. it becomes like an excuse almost, you know, because you're like, well, I can't do that. So I'm not even going to do anything because right. we can't do that. You know, I mean, I yell at my own parents, you know, for all the time. I'm like, I get that there's pains and there's certain things, you know, you're not going to walk as fast as me. But, you know, we could slow down the speed or make it a shorter distance, you know, and I, I get on my mom all the time. I said, let's just do, you know, a short little walk around the block. You know, we don't have to do anything crazy. We could even just start going don't have to do the full block. You know, I mean, there's there's anything is, you know, better than not doing anything, you know. Right. Anything is better than zero. Yeah. So right. get a bit of a walk. Ten steps is better than no steps. Um, so it's it's important to not place pressure. Forget about the pressure. Just try to do it, and you'll see that as you try. Most people find a way to try more. Most people, it's, it is like weight loss, you know, where people keep trying until they find the correct diet. What works for somebody else doesn't work for you. But we all have all these instruments of mobility at home that we should try to use. Um, and once you're past those limits, then you really need a gym. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there is no more canned beans to lift and you maybe need five pounds that you could find at the gym. So it's very important and, and always try to be safe. Go slow, in moderation, um, because sometimes it takes, a, it takes me longer to do some things that some people my age. So I don't, in case, I have to embrace my years. Mm -hmm. um, I can't yeah. be living in the past. That's it. There are things that I can't do. I'm looking forward to the things that I'm going to be able to do. That's it. And short little goals. You know, right. I feel that a lot of people, when they come and maybe they are overweight and maybe, you know, they're getting over a bad back and, um, you know, they, they, they're told by their doctor, you know, why don't you start exercising, go on this diet plan, um, you know, do a little meditation. Um, and if they do one thing wrong oh today you know i had a i had a cheeseburger so i'm not i and they just like say okay i'm, I'm a failure you know it's you know, we all have little goals if you have little goals you can't change everything all at once you can't wake up tomorrow i'm on the diet i'm gonna have 1200 calories i'm gonna run every day <laughs> are you what are you doing i'm gonna drink you know three gallons of water if you don't do anything then you kind of a lot of people feel like they failed they the failed, whole right? process you know, it's slow. It's it's a process and you have to kind of learn it. It's it's not something that you just like read a book, but you actually it's it's education. It's like almost re-educating your brain on, you know, taking care of yourself like this is about you. It's so hard to get people, especially as we get older and their grandparents and they have kids and grandchildren and and those kinds of things to say, okay, step back. Now it's time to take care of only you. You know, um, I know in the classes that I teach where, where it's mostly seniors, I always start my class out having everybody, you know, just think about themselves. You know, you're here for you, no one else. You know, this hour is about you get finding your balance, you know, reaching where where you want to reach and you know and i talk a lot about it during my class and i and the, and when i have a a student come up to me they'll say you know i never really did that before i never really just thought oh hey i'm coming to yoga for myself i mean there's yeah. something about it obviously they like but when they start focusing on themselves and understanding their body signals too because i always say listen to your body it's telling you exactly what you need um you know, it's it's a whole different thing. You know, people just have to understand that it's okay. It's not selfish to kind of take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. If even if you have a big family and other commitments, you need to really do that. Do these things for you. You just, I find that people aren't even like don't get that. Yeah, people people don't um, take time to enjoy something about their own, about themselves. And, and as you put, it's very important to, to feel yourself appreciated of yourself. You can't love anybody unless you love yourself. You can't take care of anybody unless you take care of yourself. And you're going to have to take that time aside and, and think of yourself because there will be a day that all the people that you have around you may not be there to help you that one day. 
And I tell people, baby steps. Yeah, you don't have to go on a cruise for 60 days. But um, we're going to actually take a quick break. You're listening to Project Independence and You, Community uh, Talk Radio on 88.1 FM and WCWP.org. We'll be right back with Dr. Nieto after a quick break. WCWP is your home for great music and great conversation. You'll find all that and more on WCWP.org. Listen live on the web, check out the lineup, subscribe to podcasts, and stay up to date on the latest station events. Get in touch with us and let us know if you like what you're hearing. And find out how you can support or get involved at the only community public radio station serving Nassau's North Shore. Plus, sign up to get a free bumper sticker. It's all online at WCWP.org. And welcome back to Project Independence in You Community Talk Radio at 80.1 FM and WCWP.org. And Rebecca Miller, along with Christina Liu and Dan Cox, and our guest, Dr. Nieto, and just talking about a lot. We, we kind of go off a little bit, as you can <laughs> see, from not from the topic, but, you know, um, we're, we're, we're always, you know, with our guests, it's so important to get your perspective and what you specialize in and how we can apply that that advice and recommendations and information to our listeners because that's really really what it's about um you know as we get older too i mean you know unfortunately these things do happen is there any way and i don't even know if this is the right field but we're talking about posture we talk about posture a lot i mean as kids as we get older People talk about their posture, the changes. Is there anything we could do if, if you tend to be someone who kind of hunches or you always have, even at, as we get older, is, are, what, are there things that we can do? You know, it used to be someone would say, you know, put your head up, but, but that's not really like, you know, or do you bring your shoulders back? How, how do you realign? So you have to, so one of the, one of the best ways to realign whatever amount of realignment you could do. Uh, once you're, once the, the, the bone shape changes, the body or the, the posture will change. And, and the bone shape changes either from, from trauma, excessive use, or osteoporosis as they start to collapse a tiny little bit. As we start, you know, most of us are, are shorter when we we're elderly than when we were 17. And it's because the bones are, coll are collapsing a little bit. But the important thing is to exercise and, and strengthen your muscles. Whatever is strengthening you could do of your muscle, because your muscles are going to help you move your joints. And if the muscles are strong, the posture is better. If you're, if you're overweight, try to come to a, a, a reasonable weight uh, area that your body may feel better in that therefore you could move more you could exercise more mm -hmm. um if you already have a set deformity you develop bad scoliosis the best thing that you could do is keep a reasonable exercise program to strengthen your muscles because that's where all the start we could do the biggest operation on someone and they never move a, a finger in their life again is going to be useless all the operations we do is to try to keep people moving. And it hurts initially, as it hurts sometimes when I take 10 days off from stretching, the next time I'm gonna stretch, I'm gonna feel a little pull or more sometimes. So we gotta keep doing it. It's back pain, bad posture, all these things are not different than high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. We have to take our pills for our diabetes, cholesterol and high blood pressure. We have to exercise for our whole skeletal health and health. And so see it as a way to take your own exercise medication for whatever it is. Yeah, we're gonna we're going to become a little bit hunched. There's nothing we could do about it, but we could feel about better about it, have less pain, have more independence, have more mobility. One other aspect that I was uh uh, that I wanted to to include is lifting. That was on, that was written down on my paper. Be careful with lifting. Yeah. Okay. I used to go to the gym and do a lot of bench pressing. I go to the gym and I walk. Why? Because 
when we're 17 is different than when we're 60, than when we're 70, than when we're 80. So any, any lifting you have to do, remember to bend your knees and remember not to do it excessively. Something that stuck to my mind before I went into medical school, I used to do construction and, and I worked for a union temporarily. And at that time I could go to the gym and do 300 pounds of bench pressing. So I could lift oh. a whole 100 pound of cement by myself mm -hmm. until the union rep came and say, you can't do that. You have to do it with two people. I go, but I can because you're gonna get hurt. Guess what? He was right. So you could get hurt any time in your life. You got to size the object. You got to size the situation. And you got to be careful because if you, um, if you fall and or get a herniated disc or a spine fracture or a torn tendon in the shoulder, in the knee, or you lose your balance after trying to lift something too heavy and fall and break your hip, it is terrible. I tell people, if you don't have to, don't do it. And if you have to, try to get help. Mm -hmm. Because it's very, one little incident will ruin anybody's life. It'll mm -hmm. stop. Yep. It'll, one, we, a lot of people walk up with osteoporosis and they don't know it. It is the one day that they live in a building, the heat is too high, they go to open that window that has never been open for 20 years. They pull up and they get stuck. That's how they could break a, a, a bone. What was better? Probably ask someone to open the window for you. You don't have to try to carry things like you carry a nice, clean baby close to you. Mm -hmm. they, if you could carry something close to you is better than if you carry it outside your arm's length. That's how you're gonna get hurt. Nothing that you don't have to lift, don't lift it. It's okay. Bend your, bend your knees. We we talk a lot about um, making the home also accessible. You know, if especially if you're living alone, you should have no reason to stand on a chair or a step stool. Period. You know, if there's something on a high shelf in a cabinet, have someone move it down. There's no reason for you to ever, you don't want to ever, especially if you're alone, have to find a chair to stand on to move something because, you know, you fall and then no one can hear you. But it's just because a lot of homes today are not, I mean, the new builds are much more accessible, but the homes that have been in existence, you know, for 40, 50, 60 years, are not accessible and if you do break a hip or something happens to the knee it's going to be very complicated to get you back into your home so we we, we talk about you know make you know, get rid of throw rugs no one should have lamps or wires those kinds of things too so your environment needs to be you know really safe yeah please don't change light bulbs don't okay. know. No. Don't, don't go after spider webs on the corner of the ceiling. Do not do that. Um, get rid of any chair that has wheels. Any stool that has wheels should never be in the house because at any age, you fall from that, you're going to yeah. get hurt. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, the wiring, absolutely right. The, 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 the carpets. The throw be, rugs. Be careful with the carpets. Um high chairs, all those things. I tell, I tell my, my patients, if you don't have to do it, just enjoy your life. Do something that you could do safe and, and don't don't lift things, don't go, don't change light bulbs, don't try to fix things that somebody else can do. Call for help, call for help. Call 311-869-6311 at Project Independence. And we have minor home repair help too. So we do we do things like that i'm i'm sure you unfortunately see a lot of patients that have had falls that probably could have been avoided um and you know and that's kind of sad because you know it's just instead of kind of giving yourself this opportunity to safety it's an opportunity to falls and you know that's what that's what we'd like to avoid if we could help one person right. you know do make their home a little bit safer that would be wonderful and and listen listen to your mates 
Um, it is it is interesting. Story with no names. People retire, buy a nice little piece of land upstate New York. Um, he decides to get up on a tree for no good reason. Goes up and he's been told three times, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, wanted to cut a small branch, not affecting anybody, not changing the weather in the world. He fell down and broke his back. Oh. And had to sell the retirement home to come back to the city. So think about how to be safe and listen to your mate because no one wants to hear, I told you so. Right. <laughs> It's a source of, of fights. So mm -hmm. be careful. Uh, feet on the ground and arms uh, not about, not higher than your head. And, and things will be okay. Right. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Safety first. It just makes sense. It makes sense. For those very adventurous people who like the scooters, wear a helmet, wear the knee braces, and wear the elbow braces. Please, please, please. What about bubble wrap? Like, should we just walk around? <laughs> yeah, they'll start bouncing, and now it becomes like, that they really get hurt. All <laughs> oh, right, that's true. Because you, you can, you can bounce around. I mean, it's you know, again, we just like to offer a lot of advice and recommendations, and for the most part, a lot of things we learn from our listeners and from the people who. Um, go to you know a project independence members for which we have um over fifteen thousand members now Christine? yeah close to 16 absolutely and you know it's just i think you know it's something that all of us struggle with because as we have brought up a lot of times throughout the show we're in a society where we want things done immediately we want to get it done we just so we're going and that's when unfortunately these incidents happen you know, I mean, I know my own self, you know, I was laughing, Dr. Nieto, when you said that about your, because my husband's always yelling at me because I'm always picking up some kind of storage box. I'm moving something around. And he's like, why don't you ask for it? You're going to hurt yourself, you know? And he's like, it's going to, and and he's right. You know, and it's one of those things that you really have to, you know, just weigh the things because is it worth, you know, putting that wear and tear in a situation where you could have just, you know, asked for, for some help, you know, and, and especially when you're aging and, and a lot easier for something to go um, awry. So it's just safety first always, I think, is the overall message. And just to slow down, you know, yeah. right? Like it's it's a, to pause and think and not, you know, because I know in the business that we're in, you know, that's when we really do see is when people, you know, just made some quick decision and it can be so detrimental. Like, look at this, cutting a branch, you know, changed his whole course of life. So um, it's just important to to listen to all these things and, and to really process it all. Yeah. Definitely. And I, on a super random note, a question, the age old question, and I have to get this in before we end, and it's a little veering off course, but you know, it's the, the debate of cold or hot, right? So you get an injury. Do you ice it or do you put heat on it? Like, what do you do? And what, what, you know, like, so the, the, the common uh, philosophy is as soon as the injury happened, you would put a little bit of ice to avoid things from going to that swelling area to deposit and take care of bad things. As time goes on, it really becomes whatever makes you feel better. Warm compresses are good when the pain is chronic. However, some people enjoy the ice as well. Both have problems. The ice could burn you mm -hmm. and heating pads could hurt, burn you as well. Mm -hmm. So whichever, initially ice is better. Uh, if it becomes a chronic issue, then probably warm compresses uh, are better, but people could decide back and forth. Either way, be careful. Um, I see a lot of people getting burned with a heating pad. Mm -hmm. Not all the heating pads have a good timer. They don't turn off people's uh, sensitivity to heat. is completely different. Uh, and, and if it, it doesn't hurt, it could change the pigmentation or color of the skin. So be careful with all those other things. Best thing is try to get some professional help. You know, if something hurts, eh, have it checked out by someone. Physical therapy is a great tool to get you moving if you have a minor injury. 
And when you're there, get tips as to how to keep healthy. These physical therapies are great resources. They really help so many people and, and teach them how to live better, walk better, uh, exercise better, not injure yourself. And, and they're, they're really, is a re really good resource for, for, for all of us. Uh, but uh, warm initially is good. Heat is, is good initially. And then after it's chronic, heating pads are probably better, but ice is not out and don't get burned. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's a good question. Can yeah. I, I'm going to go a little random too, but not <laughs> as much. Um, I feel like when we talk about, everybody now knows when you have to pick up something heavy that you can lift, you need to bend your knees, right? Bend your knees, do that. If you stand up, I mean, that's something that, you know, we, we've all kind of learned about. I feel that we, we don't talk enough about the core. Um, a lot of times seniors will say things like, it's so hard to get up out of a chair. My legs are weak. I, I, I don't think it's your legs. I think your legs are probably okay. But you, you, when, you, when you come up, you have to use your core strength to get you up. And I know there are seniors who fall and they're okay. They're on the floor, but they can't get can up. Die. And it's because they don't have that upper body and core strength to help them. They're, they're crawling to the couch. They're using their legs, but they can't get themselves up because of it. I mean, it's, it's, I, I wish that there was a, like that kind of emphasis that we have on the knees and that when you get up from a chair, you should always engage your core. Like it's just kind of an exercise or, or something that you should do and eventually not even think about, but just do it, you know, yeah. with the core. They're right. Uh uh, the core is, is, is the most important um, set of muscles to keep you upright. So, uh, so your legs could hold you, but they'll give up. And if you have to move, your legs could move, but the rest of the body may have a hard time. And, and as we were talking about with the walker and the chair, uh, during, doing that exercise, sitting and standing repetitively, it, it may help your core and raising your knees when you're sitting down. It's, it's, you don't have to do sit ups. Sit ups, I think they're 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 a bad uh, exercise, but crunches. Just focus on the muscle that you have to move. When you do a crunch, you just focus on strengthening the abdominal muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do a sit up, you have to bring your whole upper body up, and that puts a significant amount of strain in your lower back. Right. And uh, as we keep getting older, that is strength in the lower back keeps diminishing. So the more strain you put in, the more problem it is. So uh, be careful. So I, I really try people to do crunches and I tell them, you know, when I used to play soccer when I was late, when I was young, we do tons of sit-ups and, and that is not really that good. But at that point, your body is in the absolute best health. So you could do almost anything you want. True. At age, change and crunches are much better. Stationary bikes are a great resource. The uh, those little uh, foot bicycles that people have, uh, I think they're great. Uh, there is there is different tools to keep moving, and it doesn't have to be too too complicated. And a lot of them will help you strengthen your core. Thank you so much. I, I, we we have to go to break. Um, Dr. Nieto, thank you so much for joining us today. So much great information, great conversation. I know our listeners, if they want to get in touch with you, um, you know, they can call us at 311-516-869-6311 and we will make sure that we get you Dr. Nieto's contact information. And again, thank you so much. We really appreciate your hour. Thank you. Look, this is great. Thank you. And everybody, please be safe. You're listening to Project Independence in You.